the legend who taught us to break with creative limitations and censorship. A voice that made thousands of souls roar with only two vowels. An artist who motivated us to fight to the end to become world champions. Despite his absence, he is an influence on new generations and will continue to be a force until someone stops loving his music. Farouk Bolsara, or Freddie Mercury as we know him, was born on September 5, 1946 in Stonetown, Zanzibar. From an early age, he showed great talent for playing the piano. Before age 18, he was already performing at parties with some friends under the name of the Hectics. On his arrival in London, he continued his art studies at Isleworth Polytechnic. In addition to being a prominent musician, he also created his own clothing line and wrote some articles for London newspapers. In his early years as a musician in London, he was not so successful, although he was recognized for the notes his voice could reach. In bands such as Ibex and Sour Milk Sea, he went unnoticed. By 1970, he met with Brian May and Roger Taylor to form Queen. A year later, the quartet was completed with the arrival of John Deacon. After the release of the Bohemian Rhapsody single, Queen attracted industry-wide attention and Freddie established himself as one of rock's great voices. Although Mercury openly stated that he was gay in 1974, he maintained a relationship with Mary Austin, to whom he went on to write several songs, including Love of My Life. After their incredible performance at Live Aid in 1985 came two successful tours and other collaborations with renowned artists such as the Spanish soprano Montserrat Caballier. By 1987, Freddie was diagnosed with AIDS, but he wanted to keep it a secret and even denied it in an interview. A couple of years ago, his personal assistant, Peter Freestone, spoke about Freddie's final moments on his Ask Phoebe program. Freestone, who was affectionately called Phoebe by the singer, recounted the time in 1987 when Mercury confessed to him that he had HIV. He said, Never regret anything. You're wasting time when you can't change it. Get on with what you want to do. The press kept suggesting that Freddie Mercury was ill. By 1991, the members of Queen were back in the studio to record their 15th album. But Freddie's health and energy were no longer the same. On September 5th of that same year, he celebrated his 45th birthday with the people closest to him. In his final days, according to Freestone, Freddie never let the disease control him and spent hours painting. Days before his death, he told Peter and his bodyguard that he wanted to see his art collection one last time. With the press siege over his illness, Freddie and his manager, Jim Beach, released a statement on November 22nd at 10 p.m. It was officially announced that Mercury had AIDS. Two days later, on November 24th, Freddie Mercury died in bed at his Garden Lodge mansion of Bronco Pneumonia. One of the things he made clear to Jim Beach was, You can do what you like with my legacy, just never make me boring, revealed Peter Freestone. Today, we remember Freddie as a legend and an artist with great energy.